So our next question comes from Crossover Maniac. That's very nice. Uh, from our video on quantized redshift. And they say, uh, 30 or 40 years ago, when someone did suggest quantized redshift, he got booted out and booted out and denied telescope time. When people do edited stuff like that, that doesn't tell me that the consensus was due to observations being so obvious that no one could dispute it. It tells me other people bent the knee and obeyed because they didn't want to wind up like that guy who went against standard belief. I, I think we know who the the subject is here, right? But this is this must be Halton Arp. Halton Arp, yes. Right? I mean, he's he's quite famous um, in in the what is it the alternative cosmology circle? Should we yeah. say? So, so let's just um, try and understand partly this story here. So Alton Arp is, uh, he, he, he was an astronomer. He, he died a couple of years ago now. And he, he produced um, an Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies. Is that what it's called? That's what it's called in 1966. Yeah. Yes, it's where you know, he collected together uh, images of interesting galaxies, right? They were, you know, it's not just your standard catalog of law look at here's a spiral here's an elliptical but mm. there's galaxies and quasars and things going on in there it's like you know th these are interesting so maybe these are things that should be looked at and i believe that that's still a very well regarded um publication right i mean it has 664 citations on the nasa uh, uh database of citations and you know, I'm just looking at them now, and in the last two years, where are we? 2020, uh, you know, t 30 citations in the last two years since the start of 2020. Yeah, that's a, that's a anyone would love that paper. Those, yeah. those sort of stats. And exactly, and I think that there, there isn't a, an astronomy library in the world that doesn't have his collection of, you know, the of peculiar galaxies. Mm. He is well known for some of his publications where he questioned the cosmological interpretation of the redshift, mm -hmm. right? There's this, you know, is the redshift due to the expansion of the universe or is the redshift due to something else? Mm -hmm. And there has been this story, I don't want to say it's myth because, it, you know, there, there's some fact here that, that he got ostracized by the community and as the person says, kicked out and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think the truth is a, a lot more complex, right? I, you yeah. know, he, what does, what does kicked out mean? Yeah, it, it's funny. This, the comment says, you know, 40 years ago, he was kicked out. Uh, 40 years ago, Halton Art was the president of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. He was president of that society for between 1980 and 1983. Um, there's an interesting review by Michael Rowan Robinson of his book. It was called Seeing Red about the, the redshift controversy. It's a good title, actually, in 1988. And, and, and Robinson points out that, you know, he, he claims to have been kept off telescopes and been unable to publish, but he did publish 40 more papers on the topic of his, of his um, peculiar galaxies. And, and at the time was... Um, he received a, a quote, you know, a sprinkling of prizes and awards, and as I said, was was president of a of a major astronomical society. So it doesn't quite stack up this this I got silenced by by the establishment story. Uh, and the, the, there's also this thing about you know being kicked off telescopes. I mean, I, again, look, I wasn't there. I don't know the the exact politics, but. Uh, I've been in professional astronomy since uh, like 1990, so quite a while now. And the process of getting observations on telescopes is competitive, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's almost squid games kind of thing, right? You know, <laughs> what, what, what you have to do is you have to, put, you have to put together a proposal with a scientific argument and you have to talk mm -hmm. about what's the scientific question you're gonna deal with, et cetera. And depending upon the telescope, your success rate can be you know, for things like Hubble Space Telescope, it can be less than one in 10 proposals get up. Uh, it, it can be worse than that kind of thing. And so, you know, it's par for the course of um, applying for telescope time that you're going to get some rejections. And people, and I will, will say this, people that, that allocate telescope time are 
risk averse is that the right word yeah. you know what they try and do is they look at the proposals and look at what is likely to pay dividends in the sense that you're going to do these observations what is the scientific question you're asking what is the chances that your observations are going to answer that question mm. how many people is it going to benefit and all this kind of stuff and you know if you are putting forward something which goes against the mainstream ideas, then you need a very concrete kind of case on what it is that you're going to test and how you're going to test it. Mm. So yeah, I, again, I, I wasn't there. I, did, I wasn't on, at the meetings. I don't know exactly um, what, what decisions were taken and why, but getting telescope time has always been hard, right? It's, it's, it's never that easy to do. So yeah, it, it doesn't sound to me like he was kicked out and and disappeared, right? I, I knew his name all the way up until his death, which was only a few years ago, a decade ago. Yeah, now. I think, uh, yeah, a few years ago now. Yeah. Um, oh, hang on, I have that here. No, 2003, uh, 13, sorry. 2013, yeah. So, so he was well known in astronomy, his ideas were well known, but as you said, he's still published. There's a bunch of very interesting galaxies that are still named after him. So I'm working with a student now, and we're trying to find distant galaxies and trying to work out whether the in particular, the radio emission that we see from that galaxy over there is due to a central, you know, black hole active galactic nucleus, or whether it's due to the fact that there are lots of stars forming in that galaxy. And if it's due to stars, how many stars are forming? Will it be lots of stars? Is that even possible? Well, if it is, the, the argument goes, it would be even more star forming than a famous galaxy called ARP 220. And we're like, well, I don't know. That's kind of the record holder here. I don't, I don't know if we want to go up against that galaxy. But yeah, yeah. it's still, his name is still attached and has not been and will not ever be removed from a whole bunch of absolutely fascinating galaxies that are still quite, you know, well known. Uh, yeah, so we should also add one of the, 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 the interesting things. So going back to the original question, so this question number one, quantized redshifts, hmm. right? And fair enough, back in the 80s where you were still, you know, a, a small bucket full of redshifts, you know, you, uh, you, know, you know what humans are like, seeing patterns, you've got a distribution, mm. oh my goodness, they're clumped, etc. But now we've got redshifts of millions of galaxies and there's no quantization in there, right? That's gone. Well, you know, it, it was like small number statistics, it's, yeah. it, it, it's disappeared. The other thing which we wrote about in our, our second book, Right, mm. our second, our second Which best-selling is un book. Conveniently behind my head, and I should bring it out. Yes, yeah. the Cosmic Revolutionaries Handbook. Yeah, the other thing that Arp said, of course, is that maybe quasars aren't cosmological objects. Maybe they've been ejected from galaxies. So yes. he he found several cases where you've got a galaxy and there's some quasars around there. And the galaxy is low redshift, meaning it's nearby. Quasars mm. are high redshift, which means they're further away. But he said, well, it's kind of weird that we see these quasars around this galaxy. Maybe they've got something to do with each other. And therefore, maybe quasar redshifts aren't cosmological. Mm -hmm. and, and as we argue in the book, that doesn't take away from the argument that we're still in an expanded universe. Mm. It just says, oh, if that's true, you've got, some, you've got something to explain about quasar redshifts. Yeah. But galaxy redshifts are still, they still appear to be cosmological. Yeah, I'll put a link into the, the, the original uh, video where we talked about all of this stuff. Yes. And, uh, yeah. and don't forget that uh, both our books are available as uh, presents for. Oh, Christmas. our other book, yeah. Our oh, Christmas yes. Is coming up. Oh, what? Oh, oh, a fortunate universe. Yes. And your latest book, we should do a video on that. Oh, you yes, have a yes, book yes. Out with uh, Chris Barry. Have you got a copy? Uh, I do not have one here. It's in the other room, but uh, oh, okay. I, it, but it's um, uh, where did the universe come from? And other cosmic questions with Chris Ferry, who is famous for the uh, books for babies, quantum physics for babies, etc. Yes, we gave a, a, a friend of ours just received. I think it's statistical physics for babies for their newborn. So uh, 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 that's that's excellent.